So yes, I'm Nicole Seymour, and I'm the creative director for Enamel Tech. We're a small children's production company based in London, and we specialize in developing early language learning content for preschoolers, presented in a playful and cultural context. And Paca Alpaca, he's the very colorful and fluffy alpaca on the screen, is our flagship brand for delivering our mission. During this session, I will present our journey, how we developed this premium brand from scratch, first launching with apps, and then onto other platforms. Our journey started about three years ago. We've come a long way in what we have produced and learned as a result. I will aim to share with you our challenges and successes, how we adjusted our plan on, uh, based on outcomes, and looking to the future as the brand evolves. I hope you find our story helpful as you embark on your own respective journey. To give you a bit of context, first a little bit about me. Uh, so, as Adeline mentioned, I've worked um, for some of the big broadcasters and mostly on preschool TV shows, and you might recognize a few on the slide. And some of the notable projects I worked on, I produced an online world for Doc McStuffins, which is a key preschool uh, TV show on Disney Junior, and this game was localized into 12 different languages across Europe. Whilst at the BBC, I created and produced The Lingo Show, which launched online as a game on the CBB's website and then was actually commissioned into a TV series. And I can safely say, going from big, big broadcaster budgets to a startup with limited budget and resources has been a bit of a culture shock and a big learning curve, but worth it. So Enamel Tech was founded by our MD, Dr. Sarah Faisal Al Saud, who could not find suitable learning apps for her young children in her mother tongue, Arabic. Unable to do so, and referencing her background in human-computer interaction, inspired her to start this company to not only support Arabic, but also early-stage learning in multiple languages, and through which Paca Alpaca was created to support this vision. And to start us off, I would just like to show a short video of what Paca Alpaca is all about. Hey there, fellow fluffy adventurers. Come join us on an epic journey around the world with our fluffy adventurer, Paca Alpaca, where you will learn colors, shapes, numbers, sing songs. Paca Alpaca travels the world, E-I-E-I-O, in different languages. We've made fun and fluffy apps to play. Play with amazing building blocks. Connect the dots. Play hide and seek. Block. Blur. Alpaca loves to discover new places and meet new friends. Yay, Paca Alpaca! Right, so uh, starting with development, Paca Alpaca was actually the brainchild of Sarah's young daughter, Muthi, who was three years old at the time. Muthi fell in love with the alpaca animal and also came up with the name, which she thought was so fun to say over and over again, Paca Alpaca, Paca Alpaca, very sing-songy, and also following suit with other recognizable, catchy animal names, such as Peppa Pig, Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck, Paca Alpaca, and so on. She also insisted he travel on a carousel. Basically, she was intrigued by this beautiful vehicle, as most kids are. And then when we went into development, we created the following criteria. Paca Alpaca was to reflect the joy, wonder, and curiosity of a preschooler, just like Ruthie. During development, we tested with children many different character designs. The coloring and pattern choices also went through many iterations. 
And now looking at these very early designs, it feels like decades ago. And what we ultimately ended up with, a simple, bold, colorful, 2D look and feel appealing to young children, and a magical carousel that transports Paca Alpaca all around the world. And then we launched into actual production, which started with apps. First, though, I'd like to give you a quick summary of our journey to date. In 2014, we started our asset development and app production. In 2015, two apps were rolled out, and by the end of that year, we also launched our channel on YouTube. In 2016, we started to launch our videos on specialist early learning platforms, and now in 2017, we are planning strategic partnerships. But first, our apps. Our initial plan was to roll out a suite of apps supporting our remit of learning first words in different languages. Each app would represent a different part of the world and would share the same structure, age-appropriate content encouraging children to learn first words through narrative gameplay. All our apps would be playable in different languages and scalable to add more ongoing. We did loads of kid testing in the schools as well as in the home to achieve well-balanced feedback. We also ensured complete App Store compliance to hopefully increase our chances of getting featured. So our first, our first app, Paca Alpaca, basic language learning, was ready. And clearly, we were ready to conquer the world. Uh, as far as targets, because we were just starting out and we didn't really know what to expect, we thought best to be flexible and not set any specific targets. Overall, we were confident in our product, optimistic about the potential, and really excited for launch. So all we had to do was sit back and watch all those downloads come flooding in, and uh, I think you all might know where this is headed. But first, I want to stress what went well. We built up a top-quality library of assets to reuse on more apps and on marketing materials. We received amazing constructive feedback from parents, teachers, and kids. Great reviews from accredited review sites and popular parenting blogs. Our app was even selected into the UK National Literacy Trust, which we were thrilled about, getting this important stamp of approval on our first app. And we had increased awareness across our social media channels. So with all these kudos, why wouldn't we be a big success in what we thought at the time was an active and lucrative market? So what did not go well? Getting right to the point, the downloads were simply dismal. Nothing was happening, and after a few months, we were left scratching our heads. So I suspect some of you might have guessed what, have hap what happened. The missing piece we quickly learned, we were not getting featured in any of the app stores. So even with the promotion, the kudos, and compliance, none of this was translating to significant downloads. And whilst we know the app stores are a very competitive and crowded space, we quickly learn this is where and how the bulk of this audience shops for apps. So if no feature, no one knows we're there. So what next? We were not going to let that stop us. We knew we needed to understand the market a bit better and have another go. For our next app, instead of creating a similar app to the first, which was a huge undertaking in terms of production and amount of content and cost, we decided to try a smaller and simpler approach. We created an early uh, excuse me, we created a classic early learning activity pack, which was very popular with this age group. Puzzles, stickers, dot to dots, presented in a cultural context supporting our USP, and again, playable in different languages. We also beefed up our social media. We ran adverts on Facebook, targeting specific demographics, and we also ran a competition. And to increase our chances in the app stores, we even hired a specialist company who optimized all of our keywords, our titles, localized all of our metadata in different languages, basically applying the app store science to our efforts. And this time, we also managed to get in the door at Apple and Google Play. We even received um, more accolades on this app. Paca Alpaca Travel Playtime was nominated for Best App of the Year at the British Media Awards, and we even attended the very fancy ceremony at the London Hilton. We also achieved five stars in the Educational App Store. And we even managed to get a feature on Google Play, and seeing this feature was very exciting and encouraging. The results, again, very few downloads, and that was even with a lovely feature on Google Play. 
We even tried lower price points. We were hesitant, but at this stage, we realized we were a bit late to market, and many comparable apps were now being offered free, making it even harder for us to break through. Then we tried an experiment, a free promotion, and the next day we had around 170,000 downloads. It was shocking to us. This is when we realized we cannot rely solely on getting featured in order to earn some revenue. Even though we were trying to be flexible, we knew this was not going to be a viable business model. But we knew we were onto something special. We truly believed in what we were doing and needed to figure out another way to build significant audience. We moved on to videos. So at this time, kids' videos were picking up steam on YouTube. We also saw this could be a more affordable and less restrictive way to reach an even larger audience. So we decided to park the apps for the time being and reallocate budget to making videos. As for production, we knew that creating fully animated videos would be too expensive, so we decided to have some fun and try a mixed media format. We literally went out on the streets and self-shot live-action footage and used photos from our own iPhoto collections to composite with our existing animations. And to create new animations and do final output, we hired a really great junior animator. And lo and behold, we managed to produce a series of lovely, short-format, budget-friendly, early learning videos. We also localized the videos into Arabic and French in addition to English. And whilst we had never done this before, we were smart with the output by creating a template that can easily be used to create more videos and in different languages. We also hired a video manager who is an expert in YouTube to help build the channel and manage the analytics dashboard. And by the end of 2015, our Paca Alpaca YouTube channel was launched. And then we moved on to new platforms. During this time, now into 2016, Whilst our YouTube channel was building, we also started to see the growth and potential of dedicated children's platforms, sort of like Netflix for kids. And after reaching out to a few who responded very positively to our brand and what we were trying to do, we launched our video content onto these platforms. First, we launched on Lamsa World, which is targeted across the Middle East. Then we launched on Hopster. Available worldwide, Hopster is the leading UK-based preschool SVOD TV platform, which includes many well-known children's shows. So at this stage, we were very cu curious and also really anxious to know how our content would perform on these new platforms. Then heading into 2017, we presented at a children's media conference in Saudi Arabia, Sarah's home country. As a result of our presentations and meetings with e-learning companies, we were overwhelmed, we were overwhelmed with, the, the, excuse me, with the enthusiastic response to our content and mission. Basically, which uncovered to us a pressing need in this underserved market to provide high quality, age appropriate, and simply fun digital content to support the emerging preschool curriculum. So this was another new door opening up to us. So where are we now? So on the app side of things, um, our apps achieved a few more hundred thousand downloads, including paid. Still not great, and occasionally we do run a free promotion to help boost brand awareness. We love our apps, though, and looking back in terms of learnings, compared to other similar apps, which are charging less, we were way too ambitious, offering too much content, which cost us. So now we are repackaging our apps into smaller ones and plan to create an actual channel in the app stores to achieve more presence and at a lower price cost. Um, we're also investigating uh, in-app purchasing. Again, you know, still might not get featured, but we, but we believe the cost is worth it as opposed to just throwing away this content. Also, to further maximize our assets and extend our reach, we're going to create HTML5 versions that can be licensed onto third-party platforms like Lamsa World and Hopster. And as a result of this conference, we'll also explore other monetization options. Right, so on YouTube, the first few months were a bit slow to be expected for a new brand, but since the beginning of the year, our views have doubled and escalating pretty quickly. We've published nearly 100 videos and in different languages. The hours of watch time are racking up, and just last week, we hit the 1 million views milestone. It's not huge numbers, but for us, we're on our way. 
And uh, we reached over 203 different countries and closely monitoring the traffic stats. And a healthy amount is actually coming from Russia, so that actually could be our next language. We were featured in the dedicated YouTube Kids app on a few occasions, which helped incredibly with exposure. And we were also awarded gold by the widely recognized Mom's Choice Awards. So we're pretty confident we're hitting the tipping point on YouTube. So on LAMSA, we're actually doing really well. And this is a great surprise for us, because again, this is a new area for us. Since launch less than a year ago, we're already at 4.3 million views. Paca Alpaca is also the most popular brand after Sesame Street. Yay! And, uh, and currently, we are in discussion with Lamps World on more collaborations. On Hopster, sitting alongside the likes of Teletubbies, Bob the Builder, Postman Pat, Paca Alpaca is the 11th most viewed out of a possible 131 shows on this platform. Not bad for a new brand. So overall, we are beyond thrilled that our content is starting to be enjoyed by children all around the world and starting to class with other popular, well-loved shows. Uh, as far as new partnerships, actually, they are starting to find us, and we are starting to negotiate new deals. We are also working on a collaboration in Saudi Arabia targeting preschools, which we hope we can roll out to other emerging markets. And we are open to new opportunities with like-minded partners. So when we started, we did not know what to expect and could not foresee how our journey would evolve looking at where we are now. And whilst we did have a bunch of setbacks, we never lost sight or passion in what we were trying to do. And whilst our audience is still relatively small, their incredible and ongoing response is a major factor in our perseverance. And now that we have a more of a defined plan, we are certainly even more excited to see where Paca Alpaca will take us perhaps merchandising, publishing, a TV series, or perhaps we might create our very own dedicated early learning platform. So yeah, please watch this space. And thank you, and uh, hopefully we have time for some questions. Anybody? Thanks so much, Nicole. <laughs> Certainly the name Pekka Pekka will now flow a lot easier now off my tongue. Um, <laughs> we, I'll just start off with, the one, with one question first. Thank you mm -hmm. for sharing your journey. It'll be really interesting for the audience here to know um, in terms of, based on that snapshot of the journey you've given to us, where do you see, where, what have you experienced that would have been the most surprising or most interesting learning um, that you think will be worthwhile sharing here? I think um, two learnings. With the apps, as I mentioned, we were just too ambitious, and there is so much content in our two apps, and we actually realized when we break them down into mini apps, we'll probably have about 10 apps, and we spent a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of marketing, and again, we were a bit late to market, and you know, we, we were <laughs> by the time we reached the market, Toka Boku was there, Duck Duck Moose, Disney, Nickelodeon, so we were just a needle in the haystack. And, you know, we never set out to be an app company, but that's, you know, where our expertise comes from. And um, we would have evolved onto other platforms, that was the plan, but it just happened more quickly, sooner. And uh, so that was a good learning. And I think, you know, in retrospect, that's really good because, you know, we, we learned very quickly and we're learning about YouTube and that whole universe. And, uh, and YouTube has been fantastic because that's, um, that's how a lot of people and companies and new partnerships are finding us. So it's, uh, you know, we're starting to earn revenue on YouTube, but at the same time, that's how people are contacting us. So it's also a great marketing vehicle. Well, if okay. you want to ask privately, you can ask mm -hmm. her off stage later then. Thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you. Yeah.